I'm Liz Finlay, and welcome to this podcast series on inspiring spiritual entrepreneurs. We'll be chatting with some of the wonderful business owners who come to Starseed Business Networking. This is a free monthly meeting I co-host on Zoom with Steve Nobel, and you can find details of the next meeting on the events page of my website, lizfinlay.com. Today, we have the pleasure of chatting with Mintu Tala. Mintu offers rapid transformational therapy and energy healing, where she guides her clients through hardwiring new, positive, and empowering beliefs. Mintu, welcome, and thank you for being with us. Well, thank you so much for having me. Now, can you start off with telling us about your childhood in Finland and how you really loathed school? (laughs) <laughs> yes, yeah, certainly. So as a child, I think I was always like a very free spirited, free spirit. And uh, when I went to school, I found it uh, boring. And I thought I couldn't understand why we had to do all this boring stuff. So, for example, when we had PE and the teacher wanted us to run around the sports field, I thought, I mean, this is just completely boring and useless. If she wants to do it, she could just keep going. But I'm just going to go and hide, which is what I did. (laughs) And um, yes. So, yeah, and I had like, yeah, so throughout my school was like that a bit. I was very much the kind of not the kind of typical uh, quiet girl that uh, teachers were expecting and and. In my first few years of school, I had very old school type of old teachers who really affected my sort of self-esteem and confidence for a long time in my life. Goodness. And so when you finished school in your early 20s, um, what did you go on to train in? So I, I found it really hard to kind of know what I wanted to do I always knew I wanted to help people but the sort of normal normal roots didn't quite seem right and um, I did started I started studying traditional Chinese medicine and a lot of other uh, alternative therapies as well and I kind of had a really amazing community of uh, spiritual people around me in Finland Oh, that's wonderful. And where did your path take you from there? So then uh, when I was, I was also doing a lot of uh, uh, Kung Fu and uh, practicing Kung Fu. And um, so I went, my brother lived in Beijing and I went there. I was supposed to go and travel around China, but I met an English guy there. And who later became my husband then, and I moved to England with him. What was your path then with your husband? So then, I yeah, so when I moved back to, when I moved to UK, I kept going back to Finland quite regularly to sort of top up with my, because I couldn't find the sort of spiritual people here where I lived. And then my husband, he was for the foreign office so we then soon after started traveling and going from country to country several postings so for the next 15 years we were living we lived in Kenya and and Moscow and US and uh, yeah that was the sort of route but but what happened with that route was that I kind of lost the connection with uh, sort of spiritual people I lost my community so in that sort of way the the spiritual development and, and that kind of subsided a bit because I couldn't find other people like me so that was a bit hard in that way uh, but when we lived in Moscow I did uh I studied uh, and became a Montessori teacher before that. And then so in Moscow, I managed to do that. And that was lovely. I really enjoyed 
enjoyed doing that. And so you still hung on to some of your spiritual path, even though you lost your community. Yes, yes, I did. But it's hard because I, I do feel that maybe some people can go on by the self, but, but you really need to have those sort of similar people around you and support you. And at that point, then, you know, you did, we didn't have Facebook and we didn't, there wasn't that much on online and the internet was very different, especially when we lived in Kenya and stuff. So yeah, you couldn't, it was hard, harder to kind of stick to it. Yeah. And uh, so how did you keep your spiritual path going? By reading, reading books, and I guess it's more, then it's sort of more quiet. I did do yoga a lot, and so yoga and meditation. As a child, I was always the kind of child who was, I was always looking in the stars and thinking and wondering, you know, how did we get, how did we end up here, and how did the world start, and where did this all come from, and and I guess even though I didn't have the sort of community around, that spark stayed there. And uh, yeah, meditation and listening to certain type of music and yoga. So when did you find your community again? So after 15 years overseas, we decided to come back to UK. The Kids, our kids were teenagers by then and we thought that it's time to kind of settle, stop moving around. So when we came back to UK, this is where I found back, uh, found the spiritual people again and the community. And that's just kind of really expanded and opened myself up again. And yeah, really made me kind of get right back into my spiritual world and then what happened was that and that was also we came back in 2019 summer and then the lockdown started and all that but during the beginning of the sort of maybe it was first of the first lockdown I met this pro, through a friend I met another friend who then spoke told, told me about rapid transformational therapy that she'd kind of started and there was just some sort of click went on and thought that, oh that is that sounds so interesting I have to do that and then I looked into it and straight away actually joined and started studying it was like must have been divinely guided because this friend I only knew her for a couple of months and then she's completely vanished from my life. I've never, I've not seen or heard from her since. And I can't even find her. I don't even know if she does it again, but that was definitely meant for me to find this uh, rapid transformational therapy. And why did it resonate so much with you? So it, so when, uh, a, a little bit earlier before I I I've uh, found out that I had ADHD in my sort of mid 40s and that was first a massive like shock like and uh, but then it um, explained so much about my life everything all the things that uh, you know I've been all my life I've been labeled messy and and lazy and sometimes selfish and kind of why can't and you know why couldn't I do simple things like everybody else could and too sensitive (laughs) yes definitely yeah that's always been my yeah from yes I've always been said that I'm too sensitive yes so then RTT helped me so much to kind of build up my confidence and my self-worth and kind of connect with my true inner self and start completely, truly accepting myself as I am and loving myself again. So then I kind of, it's been such an amazing journey for me 
in myself and and now I just want to help other people I know there are so many people out there who especially women but men as well who felt the same that I used to I just want to help others kind of find their true self and and live in joy of being themselves and so is this part of why you became self-employed because I think you you were telling me that you worked for a lot of agencies yes definitely so I've always almost all of my life if, when I've been working I've worked for agencies because I've always found it so I know I want to keep my own freedom I want to be able to say when I work and where I work and what I do rather than somebody else telling me when I can work and when I can have a day off or you know if I have if there is something that I need to go for I need to go and ask somebody oh can I I have an appointment can I go have a day off yes so I've kind of always been a hard person to uh, you know being employed has been a difficult I need to have my own freedom I feel the same and so can you share with us one tip that has really helped you in your business so definitely is to find your own community find the people that you resonate with and surround yourself with the right people. And also remember that uh, we're never in competition with anyone. Even if there's people who do the same, like now I have many friends who are also do RTT and you never feel that you're in competing because people who resonate with you will come with you and people who resonate with somebody else will go to them. And you always have, the more you surround you yourself with other people you have so much to share and the more you share the more you get as well and I really love um, that we can collaborate with those around us and so like you say there's no competition there's opportunity for collaboration and Absolutely. I've got a wonderful friend and colleague who's also an animal healer that when my calendar's booked up and somebody is wanting an urgent session for their animal I don't have to feel guilt. I can just happily give them her details and there's that support there as well. Yes. Well, thank Absolutely. you so much for sharing that with us. And your journey has been uh, quite in incredible, spanned the globe. <laughs> if you would like to connect with Mintu, you can visit her website, mintutala.com. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Bye, everyone.